Good evening, everybody. We may have a severe lag tonight. It looks like one of the channels fell to pieces. Hmm. Oh, well. You guys have volume lopsided. I certainly do. It's coming out of one side only. That's uh, very odd. Very odd indeed. Let's see if we can uh, fix that. It is possible. Yeah, that's uh, really one side. Uh, let's see. Ah, there we go. No, it's not it. Something was. It's not right. Be a bit dusty here. Okay. Well, someone leveled off. Here we go. Is that better, guys? Both sides. Good to go. All right, that's called. That's called dust. That's what that's called. It is uh, shaping up to be a very strange time. Uh, have you guys been watching the elections? Some of the uh, early voting? I hope they realize the polling data did not reflect the ending. hope they realize that. And expect the unexpected. Hopefully we all can. I hope that we do. Tonight we're going into Revelation with the trumpets. That looks like. Uh, now we're going to go deeper than normal. So expect us to veer off course into some in-depth views of the uh, trumpets. Why? Well, we actually have to endure them. And... I can't explain this right now, but the timetable has moved up. It really has. I will do my best to document some of the uh, mathematical changes behind certain calculations and preparations being made. We're quickly going from a speculative subject the global readiness concerning this one topic, which is the heavens, something coming from the heavens directly to us. And uh, everybody might want to be ready for that. It's a bit odd, yes. It's going to be odd. It's going to be strange. But that's something that uh, is happening right now. And it seems like they have... Many are not focusing efforts into global peace. Have guys noticed? They're not. That's, that should be clear by now. They could have resolved this issue uh, a while ago, but they're not. And the question is, why would they just, you know, absolutely drop the ball on global peace? We've not had a conflict of this type last for this long. Escalations have gone up, uh, certainly with the USA and other folks involved. The entire uh, aligned or Pacific, well, let's just call them global alliances, have all but fully engaged right now. The rest are preparing. And it looks like some naval conflict should be at the doorstep uh, of many navies in a very short amount of time. So, we certainly do live in different times. We do. But, I can tell you right now that countries are going to pretend uh, it's not as bad as it is. Even this weekend, guys, there have been... Uh, it's been an awful weekend, actually. Lots of losses. L lots of losses. Um, it's not my position, or um, I, I 
I certainly wouldn't speak about others in this matter because families are involved and many people have, uh, they're not having a good weekend, having lost family members engaged in conflict, right? So it looks like the death toll is going to continue to rise before they even declare what we're actually in. And it is um, the escalation of it. It's not going backward. It's going forward. Even with uh, proposed ceasefires, uh, short-term peace agreements, all is failing. It's doing nothing but fueling the resolve of opposed parties, opposed um, armies. And the fallout is increasing. It's only a matter of time before it encompasses the entire globe. And everybody is doing everything they can to keep this uh, in the region, but it's spilling over too quickly. That means Germany, Europe as a whole, the USA, other countries, are they should step in the high-risk area probably in about 72 hours based on how things are going. I say that because uh, the chatter, of course, is up. Um, too many movements, strange and odd movements, taking place within Europe, within the USA, uh, from different uh, people and players that are normally watched. Very strange movements. This is really going to be a time to hold on to everything that you have. Sobriety is going to be of the utmost importance. You're also going to notice a collapse in the mental processing of a lot of people. I say that because our magnetosphere is about to take a severe hit. I, I would estimate that at least at the beginning, 15% of the magnetosphere is about to be lost and it won't be coming back. I doubt if it will um, have the strength to regenerate. And we really do live in a, a, a uh, pretty perfect biosphere. It's not seen that way because nobody is talking about it that way. But we will. We will. Uh, I'll say it again. It's important that people really do know. Uh, and I'll do this with the greatest of responsibility, but people should know what the true conditions are that they actually live in. People have been blinded to a degree from seeing many things, right? Uh, there's no such thing as a mystery. They just keep that alive so that people, that seems to ease people. The problem is, and it's a big problem, if people ever foresee that they have no future, there's a certain type of phenomena that takes place. Probably two out of every five people will go through this uh, phenomena. They will begin to act very violently towards everybody else because nothing else matters. The only thing that keeps those types of people calm is self-gain. If they ever uh, face a position where they will not have self-gain, they will destroy everything around them without, with no conscience. That's how they are. It's very difficult to find out who these people are. Um, because they act, they, they act just like everybody else during normal times, but they do everything for themselves. And if they're ever faced with a hopeless future, they're going to take it out on everybody. They will begin to destroy people around them. They, this is a known fact, because believe it or not, uh, some early examples of this took place when they they do different uh, psychological and social experiments, which result in, uh, most often, death. They do it anyway. These people are everywhere. They are of a uh, 
different breed. Not, not, we're not talking about Nephilim folks either. This is a thing of a person who has no real core belief, but they just exist within the framework of uh, what people expect. They're very selfish. They think of themselves first. And if ever faced with doom and gloom, they will not hesitate to violently start, um, you know, carrying out things all around themselves for no reason. They just become hyper-violent. They're all over the place. They do outnumber um, other groups of people that will be put in certain categories, but they're everywhere, and you will start to see them. It's one of the reasons why they won't release information that will prove any one religion correct. They won't do it. <clears throat> they won't do it because they know it will be a um, breakdown in the social order, but not in the way you think. They do realize people will begin to kill each other. They will lose control. Right? Control right now is an illusion. It is something that all of you offer those in charge. No one is forcing you to do anything. They're not. You're being maneuvered, and you grant all control to them. Did you know that? Think about it real quick. You're not being forced to do anything. You're living inside a set of rules, and these rules are designed to keep everybody in a certain place. That's why they work so very hard to keep these rules. Everybody wakes up and they grant leadership power because the average person does not want to deal with it. You're trained that way. People are raised up that way. I know it sounds uh, terrible, but it's true. You grew up to depend upon them. And despite the gripes around the world, people are not so ready to rid themselves of these leaders. That will change over time, but right now, uh, people depend upon them, right? They do. So keep that in mind. You are living in a world that has been presented to you. You've been trained up in it to give your sovereignty, so to speak, over to somebody else. And nobody is forcing you to do anything. You're expecting your leaders to do exactly what they told you they would do. See how the system works? You're trained to have an expectation of leaders, right? People fulfill those roles. You grant them every liberty possible to do that, every power possible to do that. You may argue and gripe and not like it, but not one person has ever stepped up to halt the entire thing. Not one. Isn't that funny? Nobody has. Nobody has. It's kind of like uh, ants or bugs. If bugs ever realized what they could do, no other life form would have a chance, would they? The problem is bugs cannot coordinate on that type of scale, not by themselves. So because they can't coordinate, they're kept separated. They're kept in these tiny groups. They'll never rise up. Right? Never. But if they ever came to the conclusion or began to think, right, and figure some things out, no organism on this earth would have power to stop them. No organism. That's something in it. That is something. Which means if somebody could ever control bugs, they could take down everybody on the planet pretty easy without destroying anything of this world. Hmm. If we could ever come to that conclusion, I'm sure that uh, others smarter than us have. The second thing is this. We are quite young in the mind. We barely understand ourselves. We do. We, we really don't understand ourselves. We call things mysteries that shouldn't be mysteries. Not at all. All right? We have a difficult time going forward. We do. Because we all have different ideas and we want those ideas to be validated. That's how we live, right? So we're kind of stuck. 
I wouldn't look for humanity to evolve in the slightest way as far as mental thinking. We have far too much division, and tactics have worked uh, extremely well keeping us divided. The best we, man can hope to do, right, is to, uh, you know, readily adapt to the changing world. Of course, we're going to come to a point, just like Noah, where the flood ultimately took them over, and they couldn't adapt anymore. And that will be that. But in our case, it is the close of an extremely lengthy process. And you're in the final curtain call of this process. So don't miss the boat, right? You, many of you have, you've gone too far. You know, this is, you've come a long way. The Lord has done a wonderful work with all of us. He's been gracious and kind, patient, and, uh, Let's try not to throw that away at the very end. Many people are losing hope within themselves, not because they're, they, they lost everything, no. It's because they, they do not see the future. I'll tell you guys something as far as politics is concerned. One of the reasons people get so sickened by politics is because it can easily crush your dreams. It can cause you to worry, really worry. Because if the wrong person gets in there, people feel, they're going to have no future, right? Which we know that's not true, right? It's not. Because the Lord is the ultimate authority. He already told us what he's going to do. And haven't you noticed that everything has been working towards prophecy? That end result, God said we would have. The average person they want somebody else to represent them. But I believe the workload is going to be a bit high. Whoever sits in office this time is going to regret it. They will. Folks, I had to remind you, the world is not like us. They're not kind. They're not considerate. They're not praying. They are cruel and forceful. Right? An antichrist type spirit is in the earth in full operation, even as we speak. And so whoever sits in power, if they're, if they're a good person, it's just not going to be good for them. So you also have to prepare yourselves for something. Get yourselves ready for the unbelievable. Get yourselves ready for the truth. And here's that truth. The world hates anything that would lean towards righteousness. And if we do live in the end times, if we do live in the end times, then we know anybody who leans towards righteousness is going to be ousted from all these kingdoms of the earth. Until Christ is on this earth, the kingdoms of this world are of the dark one. They're not of the Father. They are of the dark one. And if anybody sits in a leadership capacity and they lean towards righteousness, you're going to see the active acts take place towards that person. So prepare yourselves for that. Because if somehow you think that evil can be voted out, you're wrong. Evil is governing many things in this world. It's been hidden for a long time. But it won't be hidden for long. That one passage, he who letteth will now let until it be taken out of the way, then that wicked one will be revealed. When darkness is revealed... It's going to crush many hearts. It'll wipe away much hope. Prophecy will become all too real. It will be uncomfortable. And we are incredibly close to that time. So anybody who sits in one of these kingdoms, who dares lean toward righteousness, the righteousness of Christ or of the Father, they're going to be hated. 
but people in this day and age will act upon their hatred. We're going to take an additional step. That's what you have to prepare yourselves for. Whoever it is, is going to run right into a brick wall. Anyway, be prepared for that, because too many people are not. The Father has communicated this over and over again, which is why he said, Cease ye for man whose breath is in their loins. In other words, don't put your everything in a human being, but understand where the authority is coming from. Understand where the source of truth is coming from. And ground yourself in the Most High so that you can complement the doings of mankind. So that if something takes place, you're not shaken so badly that you can no longer function. Many families are going to break up this year in 2024. I hope you're ready for that too. There are going to be so many in the world disowned by each other. This happens. This is becoming a norm now. Christians, most Christians, live in a protected bubble. You're not really exposed to the dark doings of the average person. So you may not know about this. You may not know the sufferings of some, but families are going to be broken up. People disowned. When Obama was reelected, people tossed their own kids out of their houses. The kids sought revenge and turned in their parents. Do you know that? They tried to find any and everything. And in fact, prosecution of parents went up, uh, what was it, 300%? That's retaliation or revenge. And if anybody out there understands the relationship between parents and children right now, you'll know that children have been desensitized somehow. Not all, but a great many are so desensitized that they would turn their parents in in a heartbeat. That many kids tolerate their parents so they can have a roof over their heads and basically because they don't know what to do yet. More and more they're starting to encounter 15-year-olds moving into apartments all by themselves. That's unheard of. And 15? You can't even get an apartment at 15. But it's happening. It's happening. As things uh, continue, be ready for the unexpected. Uh, be ready. It's kind of like uh, AI. Right? AI that's already doing things, and I'll explain some of that as we speak about the trumpet so you can understand why the world is going to continue to change, but at a faster pace every single day. Every day. I'll give you guys an overview of that and what's happening, what's already happening. It is... It was inevitable. And you can clearly see where it's going, which is going to cause more, more issues. We'll analyze that tonight as we read about the trumpets and look into the trumpets. Okay? I know a lot of people read past the trumpets and they say, hey, we get past the trumpets. We're going to have A, B, and C. I'll tell you something. If you think the populace is going to remain intact under the first few trumpets, you might be thinking differently once we get through, plus the other trumpets, which are the wolves. Man stands no chance. And God gave us complete accountability following the trumpets as to who was in the earth. I think you'll be surprised. I think you will. But it will not be a person sitting back in their recliner watching Revelation unfold with popcorn and a soda. No, that's not the way it's going to be. In this prophecy, everyone is included. 
in this prophecy. Folks, when I come back from this small break, I'm going to take it for you, by the way, because I'm going to charge everything in between. Yes, when the player turned on, by the way, I forgot to tell you, when I turned the player on, you guessed it. Everything went down. So, right now, wait it until 710, and everything went poof. It's getting a faster, smarter, but more precise. I'll explain some of that with the AI issue that we face right now so that you guys understand it. Now, listen, before, before I take this break, consider something. To have fear of anything is to not understand it. To have fear of something is to imagine the consequences. Right? We're not here to imagine consequences. We're here to study the Word of God to find out what these prophecies actually say so that we will have read them. But in all cases, we're not here to interpret the scriptures. Not like that. We're here to take them in to understand them. God gives revelation for his own word, right? And many people have been steered in many different directions over time in wrong places due to self-interpretation. Hey, in this face that we get excited sometimes. We do. And this is why we need more and more responsibility during these days. We need absolute responsibility. And all of us can do a uh, better job in stepping that up. And our information is going to have to be impeccable and usable. It's going to have to be very usable. That takes uh, five times more work than usual. And great confidence in the Most High. Good faith in the Most High. But we'll get there and we'll do that. And the point is, but each and every one of you who desire to be assisted to have that better walk with Christ, even in troubled times, will have that walk regardless. That no arrow that's flying by noonday will touch you. That you'll remain in the secret place of the Most High. We all have a process. But that process is to grow you, to ultimately deliver you, as a child would be delivered, that you may be born and take up your position in the eternal realm. In order for that to happen, we have to have truth. We do. We have to. It's kind of, it's kind of like this uh, Miami thing, right? All these people are trying to make the boogeyman appear that he was in Miami because he can't believe or they don't know the sequence of events that took place that day. They just don't. So when the alien thing popped up, everybody ran to it, but there's some big problems with the alien thing. Professional analysts have gotten involved with some big problems. Big problems. Some of the footage was not real. Big pro on on one of the pieces of footage, you can see the same cop car three times. And all three drivers are synchronized. So somebody was, you know uh, but you get to where do you get the good information from? You gotta speak to the people directly, right? Nobody's stopping any of you from doing that. Nobody. Nobody's stopping you guys from calling down there to that police station and say one of your officers won't talk about what happened that day. Nobody's stopping anybody from doing that. The problem is people like to consume mysteries. Let's go ahead and face it. People love to consume mysteries. And so that's like crying wolf. And one day, people are going to need to know about the Shadim, the real attacks, the real deal that will sweep over this earth and everybody will be affected but because so many people will have cried wolf. You're going to be hard-pressed to warn anybody about that. And when they experience it, their minds are not going to accept it. They're not coming to kill people. They should damn or not. They're coming to cause people stress. 
That's what they're doing. They want you corrupted. And so far, so far, they've not been doing a good job. But they're pressing even the harder. So let's get ourselves rooted even the more. Let's do that. I'll be back in a minute. We're going to start reading about the trumpets. I'll be right back. Revelation. You guys ready? Straight to the trumpets. Here we go. After the trumpets, we have a lot to read. We have a whole lot to read, a whole lot to go over. So I hope you guys stay with the schedule. I'm going to try. We did uh, lose yesterday, but it's okay. We can make it up. Revelation. Chapter 8. You guys there yet? We're going to revisit the first one. Can we do that? Keep in mind, the angel, Revelation 8, 5, the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, cast it into the earth. There were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Do you guys think that the voices, the lightning and the thunderings, right? Let's put that in perspective. John saw this while he was being escorted, right? This is what he saw when he was escorted. So it doesn't necessarily translate to the earth, or does it? Let's take another look. Listen. He said, he said, there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. What does that tell you? Uh-oh. They are in effect. They are, in fact, in effect on the earth. Right? This is something that's in effect on the earth. What about the voices on the earth? You guys may have heard about some prophecies, especially with Native Americans. And well, in fact, it's with just about all cultures. They talked about the loudness of the heavens that made people's ears bleed. Is what they talked about. Right? They talked about war trumpets. The Native Americans, I believe they called it something else, but it was similar to war trumpets, especially some of the prophecies of the Navajo, right? Um, the Hopi, too. Um, they all, they all included this. Not only were the sounds terrible, which caused your, it, it caused a fright in the body that overwhelmed people because it was so loud, so continuous, and so expansive. But there was a cry heard, a cry of children, all across existence, they said. I can only imagine that. Can only imagine. A loud noise, your ears bleeding, but that's not all. They said also, there were sights in the heavens. The, and they said the face of God moved across the heavens, which caused instant heart attacks. It caused a fear so deeply embedded that indeed they etched this in just about every single cave marking and everything else. I'm sorry that people have, over time, that they have pushed this narrative that what these cave markings are is a bunch of gibberish in some cases. Or they gave no one the other pieces of evidence found in just about every single culture that would have closed the books on the interpretation. They didn't share that with people. Because if they did, it probably would cause a, uh, a deep scar in people to start to rise up. Here's something you may not know about yourselves. Many of you have had dreams, right? And in those dreams, you were a different person, it seemed. 
and you knew people in that dream that you have never encountered in life. Now, if you have not dreamed this way, don't worry about it. You may not remember, but I, I, I'd be so bold as to say that uh, more than a few of you have had dreams where you knew people and they knew you, but these are people you never met in your life. But somehow in the dream, you were so well acquainted with them, right? It's like you knew them, knew them, like you've always known them, but they were utter strangers. In your body, just as an animal, for example, an animal will do specific things, and based on their parents, they have learned behaviors from their parents, right? For example, take a simple dog, for example. Say a dog is trying to jump over a fence all the days you have him, and he can't quite get it, right? So obviously, it's a true desire of that dog, but he can't do it. Do you not know that when he has young pups, that desire is passed to the pups? And one of those puppies is going to have, or, or just about all those puppies, is going to have a strong desire to go over the fence. But they're going to start early in their training. They'll likely go over the fence. Why? Because the parents, by way of desire, and this happens with a desire, specifically with a desire, when you have a desire, you start sending off chemical markers all throughout your body. They get imprinted on your DNA, brand new instructions. And so when you pass that on, right, they are deciphered, of course, and then come out in another um, specimen. So they want to jump over the fence with that desire. If you were acquainted with a long lost truth, and if it were an impressionable truth, you would know it. You would know it. You would have identification of it. You would have an emotional connection with it, and you wouldn't understand how. This is one thing early on. I could see that they kept that separate at all costs. They don't want anybody to have that emotional connection to some of these ruins, right? They don't want that because if that were to happen, it would drive your curiosity. And then, of course, by way of dreams, it would seem that you would access information concerning it, which would lead you in certain directions. People have found some of the most amazing things by connecting with these long-lost desires or fears. And indeed, in a dream, they, you know, they'll found something in a certain place, and in real life they go and, and dig in that spot, and there it is. You would have some sort of connection, some sort of insight. And you may start to find out what they don't want you to find out. Why wouldn't they want anybody to find out anything like that in the first place? Because if you somehow connected with a truth that was long lost, you would then begin to spread that knowledge. If it is truth, other people would recognize it. All of a sudden, the illusion would fall apart. All these lies and misdirects, they'd fall apart. Right? It absolutely fall apart. They don't want that to happen. Because if they fell apart, you would reconsider why you're so docile in the face of absolute doom. And you would not stay put according to the instructions they give you. You wouldn't feel so helpless. You turn into an instant maverick is what you would do. And you would inspire others by way of truth to do this. Here's the difference. If you inspire a person to do something, that's one thing. You, ins you, you inspire a person to do something, and it's, they know it's truth also. Nobody can stop you or the other people. That's the difference. Truth is power. They know this. Because if it's based in truth, right, you, you would lay down your life in that truth to assist somebody else. They can't have that. Because you multiply by so many others in the world would be unstoppable. You wouldn't, nobody could stop you in that. Right, so they do everything they can do to make sure 
you do you never make those connections. And if you notice, back in the past, before they had this UFO disclosure, right? Every time somebody came forward with some UFO knowledge, what did they do? They always showed, especially in documentaries or articles, they always had these people who were experts in their field, loaded with credentials, who would come up and say, this is hogwash. This could be something else easily. And they would misdirect people so fast. In other words, you'd start believing what you hear, but then some expert would pop up with his given credentials. And all of a sudden, if he spoke against it, watch, here it comes, instantly he would make it sound silly. Or she would make it sound silly. And because it sounded silly, you'd leave it alone. And listen to that term, make it sound silly. Now think about it. There were times, you don't have to admit it, but there were times when you heard somebody say something about a UFO, a story about a UFO, whatever your research was in, and it sounded plausible. It started to trigger something, but all of a sudden one of these experts would come forward and they would say it's silly. Well, that's one of the most powerful things in the world. Why? Because when you were in school, you did not want to be the one that was not in the group, that was not in the crowd, right? You didn't want to be the one that everybody pointed at. And so you began to do everything to fit in. In society... Right? If you start believing silly things, you don't fit in. And that's a powerful emotion, a caution, a warning, indeed. That's what you perceive that as, which it stops most people from internally investigating why they were starting to believe a thing. They close it off instantly. Right? Now, as of late, those same experts, you can't find them. You can't find them because too many people are coming forward saying, no, nope, this is real, right? This is real. This is absolutely real. And they know that uh, so much information is coming forward that I'm telling you right now, the whole world is going to be believers in that subject. And at that point, they're going to guide the narrative of what they actually are. They're going to guide it. Right? You still have that connection with truth. For example, if you saw something, one of those things, right? Nobody would have to warn you to rebuke it. Nobody. If you saw one that was benign or something like that, right? Uh, chances are you would perceive something different. They also, the last thing is, they want you distant from any spiritual encounter like that. Do you know why? Any of you know why? The more you have a spiritual encounter, the more gifted you become. It's almost like you're a spun. You start soaking up the abilities of whatever you have an encounter with. You will have a heightened sense of knowing, a heightened sense of this, and a heightened sense of that. They don't want that to happen either. Because then you would start to operate by faith. If anybody ever proved to you the spirit realm was real and that God's word was absolutely real, you would have your faith, would, you'd use your full measure of faith. If you ever did that, you'd be like the people they actually tested to see if they could do little weird things, right? As it turns out, you're capable of of a whole lot, but there are mechanisms within you that will allow that to be used. Jesus told everybody that if they could, by faith, not by proof, but by faith, if they could believe in what they were saying, it would take place. Now, he didn't do that as some mystic thing. That's not some mystic thing. It's something that you do every single day. You're just not aware of it. It's not put in a context where you would understand it that way. But you have been in situations, right? You have been in situations you didn't even notice what you were doing because as it turns out, when a person is truly walking by faith, they're never impressed by what they do. Never. It takes a person external from that person to actually document what they're doing, right? 
There are cases, you guys have had cases in your own personal lives where something was, in fact, broken. But somehow, you went to go use it again, and it worked, or, you know, nothing was wrong with it, only to come back where somebody else would say, well, how did you use that? It was broken. And you say, well, no, it's not. You go over there to do whatever you do, and it is broken. And you get this confused look on your face, like, wait a minute, I just used it. And it's almost like something comes and says, forget about it. Don't revisit that. Don't do that. Forget about it, right? Because if you ever begin to operate by faith, you're actually operating by authority. Remember something, faith is when you operate with things not being proven to you. In order for a person to operate by something that has not been proven to them, another mechanism must be at work internally, or you will not do it. And it's not falsely believing anything. It is having a knowing of something beyond proof. You begin to operate by, it's kind of like Christ. Nobody proved to you that Christ existed. Yet you pray to the Lord because of a knowing. You're not blindly praying to Christ. You have a deep knowing he's real no matter what anybody says, right? Now, it can be challenged from time to time, yes. But you have a deep knowing. And so you will speak to him, look to him, expect things of him by faith or by that deeper knowing beyond what you can sense physically or see physically, right? So imagine if you operated in the world that way by that deep knowing. That's where the protection mechanism comes into play. You can have a deep knowing that things are possible, but you won't be able to execute them. Anybody know why? You will not be able to execute things in, in certain levels of faith for a specific reason. Let me share it with you. Believe it or not, there are many things you have not overcome yet. Right? If you're sick, something very simple, you're sick, you want to be healed, you pray to the Lord to be healed, right? And then instantly, you feel you don't deserve a healing. So you cannot consistently operate within what you ask for. You can't do it. Why? <clears throat> because you feel you don't deserve it. The reason is not strong enough. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When it comes to you wanting something for yourself, you're trying to have faith in you can't do it because the reason is not strong enough. And so anything you would walk in, to walk in that faith, to begin to live out your life in belief of that thing, even when you have this deep connection, there's still a mechanism at play that says, uh, I don't deserve that. I shouldn't get that. Somebody else should get it. That's what you do. I'm going to help you out. So you got all these people doing that same thing. And so what happens is sometimes you, for the sake of something, sometimes you can believe and indeed in those moments you overcome. You overcome. But you've only been able to overcome by one motivation. <clears throat> something that uh, most do not discuss. But the Lord set you up for it. Now, I can tell you right now, if you're disobedient, you won't, you won't, you won't, uh, you won't actually fit in a specific spot to be able to perceive it and to carry it out. But let me share it with you. Again, when you try to believe something for yourselves, there's a mechanism at play, right? And it says, eh, I don't deserve this, I don't deserve that. And so you accept that, and indeed, whatever you were, you know, about to uh, endeavor to have faith in just, just was uh, destroyed, right? But there is something. There is something. That if you could operate by it, your acts of faith would not be destroyed. And here's something funny. Satan knows it, too. So as I'm telling you this, with you to think in the many ways he's been stopping it and what he has actually 
done to try and get you never to be in that position in the first place. Because if you begin to operate by truth faith, he's, he's finished. Uh, his efforts will be destroyed, right? So again, you can have, it, it's almost like we don't have enough self-worth and confidence in ourselves to actually continue to believe that we deserve something, so we shut our own faith down. We can't continue to believe that we deserve healing, and so on and so forth. But the Lord put people in your life, didn't he? All of us have people in our lives. Now, what we've done with those people that God put in our lives, God knows, and we know too. But I'm telling you right now, he put people in your lives. He put people in your lives so you could love them. Listen to me. So you could love them. And then he took that same person <clears throat> and something began to happen to that person and it felt like you, you were loving them but because you didn't receive any love back. You started to drift away. And it was so difficult to drift away. Right? Because the world teaches, you know, if you're going to love somebody, they got to love you back. And so you were expecting that two-sided love. You got heartbroken. Because it wasn't coming back. You, you know your father set you up for success, right? Not failure, not failure. So this other person that you could not explain the love for, you had a love for this person you couldn't explain. In fact, it was almost toxic. Didn't some of you come to that conclusion? Like, this can't be healthy. Where we messed up was, we were looking for something to be reciprocated. That's where we just messed the whole thing up. Because we had no knowledge of these inner workings. Anyway, this other person, you had the ability to love beyond all circumstances and that person was sent placed in your life to unlock some things within you nothing can be unlocked in you that's worth anything where love is not involved you had the opportunity and you will have again to believe in something more than you to believe in something higher than yourselves. Something you saw in the apostles all the time. How many of you read anything where the apostles healed themselves? Come on, anybody. I never did. Never read anything in that book, in the Bible, that said any of the apostles healed themselves. One stumbles and healed themselves. Paul got bit by a, uh, um, uh, was it, uh, one of the apostles got bit by a snake, a venomous snake. He shook the snake off after being on a boat. Remember that? And uh, the venom did not take effect. Is he by himself? No. How could he shake it off? Because of what he was doing. Not because he was by himself. Because he knew if he did not get that word to other people, the gospel, to other people, they would die on their feet. They would continue to be under a heavy hand of those all around them without hope of liberty. He knew how hopeless things were. He knew what God promised. He desired something for people that drove him. Do you hear me? Parents, you desire something for your children. Yet you're the same ones with the children who say you can't get over this and can't get over that and can't get over this and can't stop doing this and that. And the Lord has set you up to overcome everything by his principles. How so, you may ask? Your capacity to love them more than you love yourselves. Yes. You know what that means? You have loved people more than you loved yourselves. You have. How many people have ever, you know, you set yourself aside 
and truly desire the best for other folks around you. You truly do. It's not just words. It's not just some statement that you make. It's what you do. You always esteem others higher than yourselves. If that's you, you've already come into conformance with the word of the Lord describing, describing these up-and-coming vessels in this earth. You know what the last step is? To act on that love so that that love will actually be love. God loved us, but how? The Bible teaches us something very simple, very simple concept, right? God loved us in that he did, he did something. He sent his only begotten son. That's how he loved us. See, love is never mentioned without action. Did you guys notice that? There's always some action following love. If love has no action, nothing describing what you loved, because to love something is to do something to that something, right? For example, love takes the place of a verb, something that you're doing. When you love someone, you may be embracing someone. When you love someone, you may be assisting someone. Love should always be a word that can be replaced with some sort of action. And it sounds okay. If love is left by itself, oh, I just love that person. And then somebody says, how so? He said, well, I just love him. No, that's not real. That is earth-based stuff. That's not real. That's not real love. And there's nothing in it. It's just like faith without works is dead. Well, guess what? Love without some sort of action. To describe that love is not love at all. Hmm. When you have something greater than yourselves, and you can pour your love into that something, nothing can stop you from loving that other person, nothing. Again, God set you up to be fully unlocked. The problem was, by interpretation of the world's philosophies, we did not go through the entire process. We didn't. He put something in your life that you could love far beyond yourselves. But what happened? You were attacked by a way of your mind. At first, when you loved that thing, right? You had plans. But then when you looked at the standard of the world, you were hurt because no love was coming back towards you. And you were hurt. That's not how love works. Love needs nothing in return. Love needs to love. Does that make sense? That's what it needs to love. That's all. It needs to assist, to help, to do something for the other, taking no thought of oneself. That's love. Love is not doing something good and expecting a return from that good. That's not love. That's a deal. We're talking about love. And when you do that, when you're given something to love like that, and you simply love it. Your faith in love in loving that thing can never be halted, whatever it is. It can't be stopped. Thus you can't be stopped. Thus you would have been a witness to the very words of Christ. But the world, traditions of men spoil it often. Do you all see how that works? Parents with children. Something happens to a kid. Nothing can stop that parent from assisting that child. That's love. Love does not mean you talk to the person nicely all the time. That's not what love is. That's not love. God doesn't talk to us like that kindly. Sometimes we can't hear of the Lord, and sometimes he will beat us with many stripes. 
because he loves us. Whom he loves, he also chastens, right? He will correct. He poured himself the Father did in his creation. You guys got it now. I think you see it. So when you're having faith, right, in the same area of love, faith is complete. Now do you see why in the Bible every act of faith was joined with love? Do you notice that? Every act of faith was joined. There was not one act of faith that was not joined with love. And we're talking about the fruitful acts of faith, the kind that yielded the power of the living God. Every single one was connected to love. Every single one. Well, now you know. Now you know what's around you and why it's around you. It's not around you so it can love you back. It's around you that love may flow through you. Do you not know that you're made that those things are the most high? can flow through you to all these sources in the earth. Remember our last gathering, we read something, that you are the body of the living God and of Christ in the earth. That he does all of his work through his body to impact the earth. You are living vessels of his power and of his glory. You are. You are. Anyway, now you know, and hopefully, but, 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 but I give you, I give you a caution, right? When you learn something like this, it has to be solidified, just like the Word of God. When you read the Word of God, right, don't just stew on it. Go put it into action. Get experience with it right away. Because I'll say it again. What the world calls supernatural should not be supernatural to you. I'm sorry you don't believe it. I'm sorry that some of you can't see it. I'm sorry that many have tried to bring the Bible down to earth and to cause it to be like a, a standard business meeting or prep talk. That's not what it is. You have an identity connected with you, which makes you much more than what the world could ever see. And the only way to walk in that is your Father's way. And because all things were given to the Son, and all authorities were given to the Son, and He was made head of all principalities and powers, then He's the one that dictates what you have and what you don't have. And if you're not walking by faith, he can't give it to you. He can't allow you to operate with kingdom powers, walking in anything but his love. That same love he has for you, you are to have to others. And it's already within you to love that way. Some of us have allowed the world to convince us to cut that off. That was naive and foolish. But I tell you, now is the time to discover exactly who you are. And you guys have that. Hold on. Let me go to the second. So, before I got off on that tangent, Revelation 8, 5, a physical happening echoed around the world. Voices. Thunderings, lightnings, earthquakes, all happenings of physical manifestations, things observed here in the earth that were burned deeply into the memories of many. So much so, so much so, that even the conversation, having this conversation, wakes up a part in you that does not wake up for anything else. Have you noticed? 
You'll only wake up with what you actually were part of. Lightnings and an earthquake. The beginning of many things happening here on this earth, right? The beginning of that. And then it says, Revelation 8, 6, And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So, John beheld an earthquake. John beheld lightnings and thunderings and voices before the trumpets even sounded. And because there was an earthquake, you don't have an earthquake in heaven. And that's a physical earthquake. And indeed, that word is earthquake. Right? An earth shaking. Earthquake. Earth shaking was the original language. And there it is. So that means even more troubles, right? Because I say that because of this. Listen, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves a sound. And the first angel sounded, and there followed hail, fire, mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And a third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Now, let me ask you this. If all your green grass burns up in your neighborhood, how many houses are going to be left? And if all the green grass burns up everywhere, how many buildings are going to be left? Do you not know what it would cost for all the green grass to burn up, one-third of the trees to burn up? Right? Did you know that a certain percentage of the trees are trees considered to be so moist, it'll take a whole lot to make them burn. Maybe they didn't burn up because of where they are. Did you ever consider that? And as it turns out, based upon the trees, right, some of those trees, because they're right there in moisture, these moisture zones, if a fire started, they, they just simply won't burn. They won't burn at all. So, all these other trees, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be history. And with all the green grass burning up, it's a clear visual of something extremely devastating. Something that will dislodge the lifestyle of so many. Which means at this point, Earth is nothing like it is right now. Nothing. And it also means there are many casualties. Here's the good part about this, though. Before this happens, before this takes place, right, this little uh, uh, scene, we get a preview. Just like God said in the Old Testament, we get a preview by way of what we start perceiving. See, it's said in the Bible that people would begin to be troubled in their spirits. Not from any distinct source, but a troubling in the spirit they would have. And they wouldn't understand why they're troubled. They wouldn't. Kind of like you guys are right now. You know how sometimes you hop on the internet to see if anything is taking place, right? You want to know if anything is taking place, why? Because if you don't check on what's happening in the world, you feel like uh, you're blind. Anybody ever feel like that? It's because you have an expectation you can't explain. You cannot explain the expectation you have. For example, this war situation. Now, in the back of your mind, this war is different, isn't it? You may not want to admit it, but there's something different about this conflict. And every time you see things or hear things about this conflict, there's something greater within you you probably can't really bring out right now, right? Now, at the beginning of this conversation, I was telling you guys that hey, we've lost a lot of people, and we have. Israel's lost a lot of people. They have. Escalations have happened in the last two days. They have, right? We fired off. A lot of money in ordinance we have. Something is spreading beyond the Middle East, 
right? There have been incursions outside of the Middle East that directly deal with the Middle East. For some reason, the Houthis just won't go away. Yemen fighters are popping up in places they shouldn't. And despite anybody's efforts, Iranian armaments are reaching places they shouldn't be able to reach. It's nobody's fault. It is the way things are escalating and happening in accordance with the word of God. Persia, Persia, I want you guys to think of something. Persia was always in prophecy. It's just that for a long time people thought that Persia was done for. So they never talked about Persia. They always talked about Russia, not Persia. They always talked about other countries, right? Not Persia. Persia, specifically, has always been in prophecy. Isn't it funny how Persia has been preserved all this time, and now what do you hear about Iran, 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 right? Iran supplied this, and Iran supplied that, and Iran had a breakthrough in this, and Iran is responsible for this. But Iran is supposed to be, you know, nobody talks about Iran. Well, except for us. They talk about everybody else who's obvious. And why do they talk about everybody else who's obvious? Because if anybody would ever were to ever say, ooh, uh, by the way, let me, this small test of something. Is China powerful or not? Type a one if they're powerful, type a zero if you think they're not. All right, and we're speaking about China. Lots of people type in ones. And, and probably, probably, because I've talked about China a few times here, right? And some other folks have talked about China, right? So but my, here's my point. You hear a different narrative concerning Turkey, concerning uh, you don't hear anything about Syria, right? You don't. It, it's, you know, you just don't. Um, there are a few places you won't hear about, right? Because they don't add those places in the public narrative. And it's funny how they they watch this all the time. When people do not discuss a place, right, they know what you're not discussing. They know what you're talking about on social media. They know that. They know what you're not discussing. But most of the places, most of what you know has been told to you. It's not something we really know, is it? It's not something we know for fact, is it? No. It's something we've been told. It's something that they continue to say, isn't it? It is not something that we absolutely know, right? It's not. Which is why people say, well, I don't understand how Iran can do this. I don't understand where they're getting the money from. Right? I don't understand this and I don't understand that. They don't understand because the world told them differently. Or more specifically, the media. Right? Different people talk for the media. Have essentially gave them knowledge. And they're utilizing that knowledge, but now that knowledge is not, uh, it, it, it's not translating very well. Right? It's not telling the whole, the whole story. And they know they're missing things, but where they go, they can't go to China. They can't go to Yemen. They can't go there. Right? The closest neighbor they have is right next door to them, or the people at work. Or the people, you know, they left in another neighborhood. They don't know those people directly. This is what I'm saying. The interpretation of the world for each person is given to them. It's not something you've seen for the most part. It is something that people have agreed upon. Then you believe it. There's a quote, and the quote goes like this. I didn't make a quote. It said, history is a lie agreed upon. That's what history is. That quote is old and was very true. History is, set of, history is a set of lies agreed upon. That's a quote. From a famous person, right? That's a very true quote. History is a set of lies agreed upon. 
Isn't that something? And it is. What were they saying? What were they implying with that statement? Why would, that, why would somebody make that statement? Because they knew what people are failing to see. When you start understanding what the world is outside of propaganda, it's kind of heavy, right? It does not match what you've been taught and told. And because it doesn't, you carry a weight with it. And it's very difficult to tell anybody that because you will start fighting years of knowledge that's been placed over a person. You've been highly manipulated to accept a certain view of the world. And anybody who speaks opposite that, they're going to be a crazy person in your mindset. They're going to be crazy, right? Crazy. You're going to see them as crazy because they spoke differently from what you were told. But let's go ahead and face something right now. How many of you have been to space? It'd only be one person, nobody else. How many people have viewed Jupiter directly? How many people have viewed Neptune directly? How many people have viewed Pluto directly? How many people have seen the sun? All of us. How many people really know why the moon is in the exact same spot every single time? How many understand why the sun is 400 times, 400 times smaller than the sun, but 400 times the right ratio from the distance of earth and 400 times, 400 times another ratio opposite that, which is impossible, that keeps it in the same spot all the time, the same place of the moon facing us. For all these years, that's impossible. You know that's impossible, right? It is impossible. It works. It does not. That's not how celestial mechanics works, right? In other words, the moon is not bound by the gravitational pull of anything. It's keeping its own orbit. It does not follow the trajectory of gravitational constants, which are out there in celestial mechanics. That'd be like if you drove a car and you put your foot on the brake. You're supposed to stop, right? You're not supposed to go straight up in the air. So the moon is going straight up in the air. In comparison to the forces, physics, in comparison to physics, the moon is going straight up in the air when it should have stopped. If the moon was a car, and the moon is a car where somebody inside pushed the brake, it's supposed to slow down and eventually stop. It is not, the car is not supposed to go straight vertically up in the air and continue to go. That's what the moon is doing. It is not following any of the physics and celestial mechanics. It's not following any inertial path. It's, it's the way it's rotating is against the central point of mass, which would even carry its inertia. It's all wrong. And how come they didn't go over the formulas with any of you? They don't teach that in high school, do they? They don't, and they will not. Do you know why? Because if you ever saw the mathematics behind the moon's rotation, you would say, nope, something is really wrong here. If you could ever comprehend it, you would say, nope. And then if you double-checked, you'd find out that all computer systems and simulations make massive variable adjustments to the position of the moon. That means computer calculations never work out. They never, they don't sometimes not work out. They never work out. Never? How strange. You would also be surprised to know that there's no way we should have the tidal pull that we have with the mass of the moon and its current orbit. How can it do that? Yet it cannot break. It, can, it never breaks from its positional hold and its geolock stationary position. That's impossible. It 
does not happen. But you didn't learn about that in school. Did you? I heard a set of people say that people are idiots because they believe the moon is the moon. Then I heard another guy say it's better to believe that you can get that it's cheese than to believe. It's just there. I was very confused when I heard that because of who it came from. Sharing a comment like that and then people laughing and snickering behind it. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. So the world has given us a narrative. They programmed us how to believe. It's standard. It's not some great mystery, right? It's not. It is very standard to have people believe in reality in a specific way, and they do this because the alternative would lead you directly to truth. And that type of truth does not permit for the type of people in this earth to be in power. Things are very different. Did you guys catch the news? Because before these trumpets blow, civilization is going to be in trouble. During this act, it's going to be very difficult here on the earth. Let me give you an example of that. Have you guys been keeping up with current events? There's a kid shot up a school. You guys know about that, right? Did you guys happen to hear about the comments from the child that he kept making in school, drawing on paper? Well, let me give you one comment that kind of stood out. He said, it won't stop. It won't stop. And he had a gun, right? He had a picture of a gun. And he was telling them, he was writing down that the thoughts of killing everybody won't stop. And then he wrote at, at, on that thing, he said, please help, please help. Please help. Now, but you know that, you know, and I know, that is spiritual. You can think it's James Bond all day. Sorry, this little fella didn't fit the profile. That is spiritual. That's exactly what darkness does. It comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Murder is like a handshake. That situation is multiplied all throughout the earth with young people. And the parents, you know, one of the parents gave the kid advice as the child addressed this issue with his parents. That the, the, uh, the parents said, well, well, you just, you know, they, they, listen, this is recorded. This is what they said. The parent advised the kid, hey, you just have to do it where you won't get caught. They did not curve the behavior of the child. They didn't do anything, you know, derogatory to that child. It was almost like the whole family was possessed. The child gave it away because whatever had him couldn't hang on too much longer. And the kid was riding on everything, please help. It won't stop. Please help. And he kept drawing guns. And he had thoughts and voices were telling him to shoot everybody. This is happening all over the world. There are young women. Voices are speaking to them to get close to people and to get that person to kill themselves. 
That's an epidemic these days. Young females being instructed now. Names are being utilized of who to get close to and to then talk them into committing suicide or talk them into killing themselves with somebody else. I'm I. Anyway, folks, before these trumpets start to dissolve the fragility of our society, before that happens, we will, we will have endured just what the Bible said we would endure. But most, most, most notably, this is very consistent with just about every civilization out there that endured devastations. The same things are happening now in our society that were recorded to be happening in theirs right before their ultimate demise. the orbits of these bodies, right? In these things in space, natural, natural, until the unnatural things begin to appear. The forces are, are uh, already at work, both in your bodies and in your minds, in the heavens and in the earth. They're just not being seen for what they are. And the troubles will escalate. Okay, one more. Let's do one more. The first angel sounds and all the grass is burnt up and one third of the trees and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and a third part of the sea became blood. Now I'm going to pause here real quick. What could cause all the green grass to burn up and one third of the trees to burn up? Honestly, what could cause that? If all the green grass is burnt up, we know it's not one big giant meteorite, right? This is something that blanketed a very large area. If that happens, if something were to burn up all the green grass and we had a fracture in the atmosphere, something the ancients described, something that gave way to the change in the atmosphere, the glow and the hue in the skies, filling the skies with smoke, right? This is before, this is so far before Everything else. See, a lot of people believe Revelation is out of order, and they have their reasons. <clears throat> As we read it just like it is, just like it is, right, you're going to start to see a pattern. But what I've done after seeing that we're in the trumpets, I have some small sketches, right, small sketches from the trumpets, to the end of the revelation, you're going to see a pattern in things. And it does not need to be out of order. I honestly believe after the first trumpet, the second trumpet is going to blow. After the second trumpet, the third trumpet. I believe they're in order. I do. I believe that we have a concept. A lot of people say, well, you know, people are still on the earth at that time. If you read in Revelation at the type of people that are on the earth, you don't want to be around those people. The other folks of whom God has protected are protected by the living God. There's no in-between. 
and no one repented. Yep. After a certain point. Folks, that means you're in for a bumpy ride. And forgive this strain, guys. Forgive this strain. It's, it's freezing. It's okay. It's expected. We're having a bit of a uh, <clears throat> overload here. I've, everything is overloaded because i got articles uploading and some other things to COT. And to give you guys some reading content. There's a weather article in there that gives you an explanation to something uh, in the last paragraph, I think. Somewhere in the last. But it gives you an idea of why the atmosphere is doing what it's doing. And I will go into great detail on that. That's just the article. That's by no means the explanation. Full one. But there's so many things that will be happening with these trumpets. God gives absolute accountability of the type of people. He gives us the type of people that are on the earth. And when you read, when you start reading about the types of people, because the one thing I do is keep track of the types of people on the earth. And I can already tell you, see, some many have assumed that God did not give accountability of the type of people on the earth. You're going to see it with your own eyes. In very simple writing, you'll see it. You may not believe it, but you'll see it. Right? You'll see it. But I'm telling you, here's what gets in the way of revelation. The world. The world has written Hollywood movies, right? A bunch of novels and everything else. And if you take notice, their knowledge, that, that indoctrinated information they give you, is getting in the way of you just simply receiving What's in Revelation as is. To me, it's important to receive it as is. That's important. Not with my change or twist on it. Not with my thoughts. But to really receive it as it was given to John. If it's one thing I do know, so when God gives you a vision or something like that, you have to give it exactly as it was given. The smallest alteration will change everything. It will. It'll change everything. And you don't want to do that, right? There are a lot of cases when people ask me about certain dreams I've had, right? And it, I don't, it, it's so, you don't want to change anything. Now, I already know there are parts in, in, in certain dreams I've had. People may not understand, but I tell it the way it was given to me anyway. I tell it that way anyway. Only when it's about to take place. Do I ever get the fullness of what the thing was? I have one exception, and that was this hot storm that's going to sweep across everything. I was given a full explanation of that. And we'll, we'll come to that bridge soon enough. Hmm. But one of the biggest and the most troubling things is this. When Jesus went to sit at the right hand of the Father, a clock began. It is a very serious clock. And it seems like, I don't know, but if you guys if you guys have the same sense, let me know. But it seems like the world is stalling. Things are stalling badly. Like a traffic jam. But unlike any other traffic jam, something is coming to push everything forward, whether it wants to go or not. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. Okay. <clears throat> The second angel sounding with this great mountain burning with fire cast into the sea and a third part of the sea became blood. A third part of the sea. Now this, that has to be clarified because we have that word sea there, right? 
and when OC is interchangeable with with uh, as far as referencing the other parts of the Bible, the sea is also the ocean. We know that, right? The sea is the waters, the many waters. If in fact that is the ocean, we're in trouble. You know, they're they're not going there either. Can you imagine? The oceans messed up by great mountain, right? A great mountain burning with fire being cast into the sea. Now, cast into the sea is the part that gets me, right? When something comes to earth from outer space or something like that, right? It falls. When something is cast into the sea, then where do they come from? Cast from what? From where? And he just said a great mountain. Now, here's the difference. A mountain has a specific shape and a specific look to it, right? It does. It has a specific look and a specific shape. And so you would call it a mountain. Something coming from space does not necessarily look like a mountain at all. Not in the slightest bit. So the descriptions are hinting at where they're coming from. I say this because I believe this great mountain burning with fire being cast into the sea is a volcanic top. Massive. A massive volcanic eruption. Massive. And do we have candidates on the earth that will do that? Yes. Does anything else talk about a volcano going off and affecting all the waters? Right? In the earth? Yes. In fact, there are there are statements, and we'll go over some of those statements, but there are statements that state the earth is going to be anointed. Uncleaned places will be cleaned. Folks, hope you guys can remember where we're at in this conversation when we start up next time as we go through all the remaining trumpets into the one world. We're going to connect to our present day, and I hope you're prepared for that. I know that most people talk about the wounds, the trumpets, those trumpet blasts, but they are specifically for a reason. And it's good that those reasons be shared. The remaining trumpets here cause devastations to the earth. The consequential to mankind. Man has nowhere to run during these trumpets. It is not the end of the world. That's not what it is. I don't even believe it's God's wrath. He's not He's not wrathful in this. He's not. He's not wrathful at all. I do believe it is the beginning of a process that is wide sweeping. And I do believe it is the lifting of his grace. I do not believe it's his wrath. So what is God's grace? God's grace is when he gives us room or time to get things right. Right? His grace. Grace, that word grace implies kindness. His kindness. God's kindness. Because he desires no one perish outside of him, so it's his kindness. But that's not judgment. And it's not destruction. What's it going to know? All of us will know when those days hit, when those days of wrath hit. All of us will. Oops, I'm not going to hold for too much longer. I'm going to let this stuff charge up. We we could have a midnight hour, too. We could. 
<clears throat> and these pauses and breaks, this thing is pausing too much here. Right now it is. Right now. But again, it's uploading things to the site. We need these things on the site. Um, so we can get busy doing what we're doing. We're going to discuss these trumpets further. And I may have to broadcast tomorrow so I can squeeze in a lot of the info. You can always listen to it at different times. But I may do that twice tomorrow. So we can have uh, two different recordings available tomorrow. Especially with some of the backstories that I'm going to go through, which could make the trumpets a, a, a lengthy part. I will tell you this, though. All of it. Everything that takes place is necessary or wouldn't take place. And if it does not take place, well, you guys see what's happening. You see what's happening. If if mankind could somehow come to their senses, repentance start changing, things would change quickly. But just in case you have not noticed, even tensions among believers has become high in many different, uh, at many different levels. Brand new prosecutions have begun. All sorts of things have begun. So keep those things in mind. And as usual, get prepared for folks. God bless and keep all of you. We'll pick up the pace the next time we broadcast. I will not start this little thing next time we do this. It's going to have to lay dormant until we're done. I should, That was my mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have. But I did so anyway. If it can quit or if it gets done before, you know, a decent time, we'll have us a midnight hour. But we're going to cram some broadcasts in this week if you guys don't mind. If you don't mind, okay, you know, cram them in here. That way we keep pace with what's happening in the world because you guys do understand in the Middle East right now as we speak in the Middle East. The situation is not good. It's just not good. There were many losses this weekend. They did not talk about those losses. They didn't. You do understand that many within the USA must... I, you know, I just pray that, you, that people in the USA open their eyes. Many will be caught off guard. I can see that now. They're going to be caught totally off guard. And there's no way for a person to be aware of what's going on without Christ. Without him giving you vision to see clearly. Folks. God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys next time. Somebody say, get some rest, man. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll probably try that too. It, this weekend was so tasking. It, it really was, guys. Pray for the families of the many who fell this weekend. The numbers are, the numbers in the Middle East are just heavy. The sentiment is heavy. And you, oh, before I leave, you guys do understand that the hatred level is so high, right, that um, the USA has had to counter some of that hatred within this land doing specific things because there's a consensus now that we're in hot water, a consensus. We'll track this as we go forward. Um, I'll be publishing an article concerning the war. Now, the weather article and this conversation about the war is going to be uh, yeah, it's going to have a continuation with it. So expect uh, new portions to it at least once every two days to keep track of everything. The election, we're going to actually talk about the election. All these things are purposed in this cycle that we're in. All of them. Right. Talking about all these things. Not so that one person is right and another is wrong. Not because of that. With that, folks, I'm going to say God bless you. 
and see you guys next time right here at COT. Oh, if you guys have any suggestions for our next meeting, uh, go ahead and write me. Let me know. Let COT know so we can get those routed, okay? God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. God bless.